Assalamu alaikum. In the most holy name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful God. I bear witness that there is but one God who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. We're forever thankful to him for raising up from among us a divine messenger, one whom we believe to be the Messiah, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we're thankful to them both for giving us an extension of themselves. In a divine reminder and warning, our champion of truth, freedom, justice, and equality, fighting for the liberation of us as black people and all those who come under tyranny and oppression. Sure. That man is none other than the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, a son of the living God. It's in those three great names I'd like to greet you, brothers and sisters, in the nation's greetings of peace and paradise. We say in the Arabic language of Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How's everyone this morning? Fine, All praises are due to Allah. I'm fine myself, striving hard to make my word bond, fighting for Islam, because I know we will surely win. We thank Allah for giving us this word. We thank Allah for allowing us to stand up on this word. We thank Allah for his mercy by traveling himself in the person of Master Farad Muhammad to seek and save that which was lost. The black man and woman that was stolen through our ancestors over 500 years ago now, well, over 458 years ago, stolen from that land that is called Africa and brought on a westerly course here into North America to be made into slaves and turned inside out and upside down. We fit the scripture of the story of Joseph whose brothers sold them into slavery. Right. But the Holy Quran tells us differently from what the Bible tells us that that same Joseph mm -hmm. was given a vision to where he saw the sun, the moon, and the stars bow to him in submission. And his brothers knowing that was jealous of him and sold him into slavery so that he would not be able to be the one of the birthright of his father, but God already had a plan above their plan. Our destiny, brothers and sisters, is to rule the world because we suffer from the furnace of affliction. It's not because we're black. It's not because we're the original people. It's because God allowed us to go through the suffering of 400 years of slavery. 300 years of chattel slavery right. working night and day for no pay to make this country rich right. and at the end of the day 100 years of Jim Crow laws and lynchings right. and 50 years of broken politicians off some voters rights that we really don't have here it is God allowed it all to happen to show that after these people get crushed to nothing I'm going to make them into something and thereby my work with them, everyone in the world will know I am God and I exist and I am on the scene. We thank you for coming to Muhammad Ma 7C today to hear the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. All praises are due to Allah. Let us give our assistant ministers a round of applause. We thank Allah for their words. We thank Allah for their spirit. We pray Allah that their words and their spirit find root in your heart and mind to inspire us to make a change for the better. Is everybody all right? Yes, sir. All praises are due to Allah. Well, brothers and sisters, once again, here we are. In Muhammad Ma 7C, we thank you for coming. We thank you for making the sacrifice to take time out of your day to spend with us before you go on with the rest of your day. But we are here to help God's man in our midst, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Right. I am Brother Henry Muhammad. I am his student representative here in Brooklyn, New York. Don't take the word student lightly. All of us are students. Life is school. As long as you live, you are learning. And when you start thinking you know it all, that's when you stop learning and you've closed your ears on the lessons of life and you're dead mentally and it's just a matter of time before physically we put you in a grave. Yes, sir. We are here to raise the dead. Yes, right. We are here to raise the mentally dead right. with the word of God because in the word is God. And as the scripture says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. Then the word became flesh. It is by a word that entered our ear. 
and attack the foundation of thought of our brain that made us start making decisions in our life to change our way of life. It's by a word from your father to your mother that caused you to come into existence. It's by a word that we go from night to day, from darkness to light, from good mood to a bad mood. It's by a word. So in the word is God. There is no mystery, God, because you can't have the word of God without a man or a woman of God. Right. Because the vocal cords have to be there for people to hear the word. Right. That's right. There's no spook, God. That's right. We are taught in the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. In the Final Call newspaper is published every week on the back page of the paper, a part of our constitution. Yes, the nation of Islam has its own constitution. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's the nation of Islam. America's a nation, and we respect her as a nation. We respect her flag because her flag and her nation represents independence, and we want independence. So we respect all independent nations. We don't respect the way they got their independence, but we respect their independence as a nation. And they have a constitution, is that right? So why wouldn't we have a constitution that governs us as a nation of people? How could you be an organization and don't have any constitution? Think about that. How can you have, be an organization and don't have any policies, rules, laws, and regulations that govern you as an organization, but then want to criticize organizations that do have it? Many of our people criticize the Nation of Islam, but you ain't got no program. Many of our people criticize us, but they don't have what they want and what they believe. They just go for a mission and that's it. And we say, whoa, 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 how are we going to do this? We just going to do it. Well, who's going to run things? We going to run it. We who? All of us. Damn it, I'm tired of this. Hunky done did this to us and this hunky done did this to that. And you said, I noticed I said hunky, right? I went way back there. Do they like that? What? In the midst of it all, you realize that we're frustrated as a people. But when God comes, God comes with a plan that's well designed and well thought out for the people he's trying to raise. He studies the people he's going after. He studies everything that constitutes the condition of them and the oppressor and then he puts his plan into focus into motion but know that his plan is a plan that already was designed thousands of years before those people went into that condition because he's the author of their condition so we follow a God that is known by many names some call him Jesus some call him Jehovah some call him Yahweh some know him as the Father. Some say Allah. Right. We know him as Allah, the all in all. That's right. He's the all in all. He encompasses all the attributes of the names that you give God. Right. But he is one. Now understanding in our constitution, it is written in what the Muslims believe, that we believe in the truth of the Bible. But we believe that it has been tampered with and must be reinterpreted so that mankind will not be snarred by the falsehoods that have been added to it. So you'll hear us talk about the Bible today. Brothers and sisters, as Muslims and as believers, as righteous people, we should be studying all the scriptures of God. Yes, We're not to make no distinction between this prophet over that prophet, this messenger over that messenger. We look for the fine common thread of God in what all of them say. Because God is one. The only thing that divides God is Satan. So anytime we find ourselves saying that we're all striving in righteousness, but because you follow Yahweh, I'm not with you. And because I follow Allah, you're not with me. And because you, he didn't say he followed Jesus, I'm not with him. Then Satan is in the middle of that. God is not about division. God is about unity. God is about oneness. And you can't divide one into three. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Even though there's truth in the Father, there's truth in the Son, and there's truth in the Holy Ghost, but all of them are not one, but all of them come from the one God. 
But Satan comes in the straight path to divide God's word. So we believe in the truth of the Bible, but we believe that it has been tampered with. And it needs to be reinterpreted. How could we have a Bible that gives us the word of God, but it's been diligently transcribed? By his order of the majesty, King James. Taken from its original language and put into the language that the king wanted to be in. Well, that's all right. We're not against that. But where's the original language so that we can tell whether or not the king has changed the language and robbed God? In the Holy Quran, when you read the Quran, you have the Arabic on one side of the page and the English on the other side of the page. So you can go and get translation of Arabic to see if the English is precise to the Arabic. Well, why is it not like that with our Bible? And why would we as black people be so convinced of what has been given to us by our enemy in the Bible after they didn't allow us to read it for 310 years? And then after that time going to come before us and decide it's all right to them that we read it? Well, who is God? Is that white man that made our ancestors call him master? The master? Or is God the master? And if he didn't treat our ancestors right as the master, what made us think he's going to teach us right? Come on with that. Come on with that as a master over us and give us a Bible and say this is what Jesus wants you to do and this is what God wants you to do and then it says slave love your master slave if your master smack you on one cheek give him the other slave if he takes your coat give him your cloak too give him your pants and then we wonder why 150 years after that deception we so soft are oh, we hard on each other but we sure soft against the enemy this is why God has to come to a people like us because we've been hoodwinked we've been bamboozled we've been had we've been turned upside out and inside out we don't know which way is up we don't know who we are we don't know who our God is we don't even really know what religion is if it doesn't apply let it fly but most of us, if we ask you, who are you? You say, well, well where are you from? Well, what are you? Well, I'm from Jamaica. I'm a Jamaican. Well, I'm from Trinidad. I'm a Trinidadian. Well, I'm African-American. Well, I'm Barbadian. Well, I'm, I'm the original man. Asiatic black man. Maker, owner, cream of the planet, earth, God of the universe. Oh, you want something right there. You know? I'm not black. I'm brown. I'm not black, I'm colored. I don't believe in all that. I ain't with all that. We all the same. We all bleed the same blood. You're neither African or American. You're not Jamaican. You're not Barbadian. You're not Trinidadian. You're not just brown. You're not the same as everybody. How could God not make no two snowflakes alike? No two raindrops alike. No two leaves alike. But you're going to make everybody as human the same. That's not good mathematics there. That doesn't make common sense. But we've been robbed of our sense. We've been made deaf, dumb, and blind. And so since we don't know who we are, then how could we know who our father is? Because in order for us to know who we are, we got to know our father. Our true father, who's the father of all fathers. Now today, the white man has labeled this day as Father's Day. You see? And because he has ruled for so long himself, in his atmosphere, in his world, he can create an atmosphere or make an atmosphere that will make everybody worship a day that he wants to be worshipped. He is a God. He doesn't believe in no mystery God. He teaches us to believe in a mystery God, but he don't believe in no mystery God. So because of the atmosphere that he has brought up, that on a certain day of the year, everybody can focus on Father, we will say to all of you, Happy Father's Day. Because if this is the only time 
that you're going to focus on a father and the meaning of a father, then all praises are due to Allah. But hopefully, by the end of this lecture, and you hear the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan on the meaning of father, hopefully, those who don't know will be affected in a way that you see father totally differently from this day forward and you worship the real father who's above all fathers that we and I, you and I may show better respect to our fathers and those who are potential to be fathers, all right? That's right. Sure, sure. Now, brothers and sisters, you heard me say it and I said this uh, on Mother's Day, atmosphere. See, you and I all have the capability of making a certain or creating a certain atmosphere. And just to give an example, sometimes you can walk into an atmosphere and you start detecting that something is different about the area that you walked into. Like if you happen to walk into a room after two people have had a fight. And the fight is over, but the people that were fighting are still in the room, or they may not be in the room, but the people who was there that saw the fight and broke up the fight was in the room, and you walk in, and everybody got a certain look on his, their face. <laughs> You're going to say, what's going on? Nah, nah, I feel like something happened in here. What happened? Right? Because there's an atmosphere that was set. That's right. Well, in science, which the enemy uses because he got it from God, right. because God is the scientist, right. he knows if he creates an atmosphere, he can put his point across. Yes. So everybody has a father. Well, how does the enemy in his capitalistic mindset benefit from your and my father or the, the natural uh, ability for us to become fathers. Right. He makes a father's day. See, who's not gonna love their father? Well, in the black community, <laughs> unfortunately, there is a lot of disdain for fathers. But how did that come about, brothers and sisters? Is it all because of the black man being a no good father? Go into the history of our condition. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Did the slave master bring the black man over here to make him a father? Did the slave master bring the black man over here to make him a husband? Did the slave master bring the black man over here to make him a man? Or did he bring him over here to break his will? Yes, to make sure he make him into a slave to serve another man? Right. Did he bring him over here and in breaking his will make sure he disrupt the family and break him up from a family and not allow him to know his God or worship his God or pray or even use his mother tongue, his mother language? Did he take away from him his original name? Did he take away from him his family name? Yes, he did. Teacher. In order to be able to make a, a human being into the slave, into a slave, you have to break his will. Mm, right. A slave is not going to serve someone that has equal knowledge to him. That's right. So you have to rob him of his knowledge. Right. Brothers and sisters, th we got to study our history. Yes, that's how it works. It wasn't the intention of these people to make us into a family. We was a family before they came and captured right. us right. and tricked us into slavery. Our ancestors, our fathers. And in order for them to break us, they had to break us from our will of being a natural man and a natural woman. God put his nature in us. They had to break that nature and suppress that nature. So the slave was not allowed to marry. The slave was not allowed to fall in love. The slave was not allowed to be a father, but the slave was used as a buck. The male and the female to produce children for the production of what the white man wanted in making sure that he had people to, to uh, 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 plow his fields. Yes, sir. Come on, bro. Be servants to him and his family. Yes, sir. 
So when they would bring a black man and a black woman together and put them in a horse stall and make them, not even knowing one another, make them have sex with each other to produce a baby. And then once the baby was produced, once that woman was impregnated, separate them, send the woman to another plantation, send the man back, stay, make him stay at his plantation. And so he would never see his child. Yes, do you know what that does on a scientific level to the mentality of a generation, 300 years of that? You wonder how easy it is for a black man to walk away from his children, to walk away from his woman? He's never been taught love. Who taught you love? Really? And who taught the person that taught you? And who taught that person? You will find it's in our nature. Yes, it comes up, but we haven't been taught how to love only God can teach us how to love everybody says that God is love well where is God in this equation because this enemy did not teach us that so I only say that to bring up the fact that there's deep rooted uh, 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 um, seeds in us as a people that we're responding off of things that have been passed down after generation to generation and some of us don't even know it. God came to break that up. This is why we love a man like Minister Farrakhan. Right. Yes, this is why we have great and deep love for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, they make us to love God because of the work and the example that they have done in front of us. Right. All praises are due to Allah. Yes, so one of the other things we have and what we believe is we believe in the resurrection of the dead. Right. Not in physical resurrection, but in mental resurrection. We believe that the so-called Negroes are most in need of mental resurrection. Right. Therefore, they will be resurrected first. Mm. Furthermore, we believe we are the people of God's choice, as it has been written that God would choose the rejected and the despised. We can find no other persons fitting this description in these last days more than the so-called Negroes in America. We believe in the resurrection of the righteous. I bring all of this up as statements before we get into the lecture on the meaning of father to say to you, brothers and sisters, we study the Bible and we study the Quran. We believe in the truth of the Bible. We believe the Bible's been tampered with. Yes, we believe in the resurrection. That's right. We're not people that don't believe in the resurrection. We believe in the resurrection, but we don't believe nobody that's dead and buried under the yeah. ground right. is coming back up with some abracadabra from a mystery yeah. God. Yeah. We don't believe that God said anything like that in the Bible, and those who read those words misinterpret what God meant. Because when he talks about the dead, he is not talking about the physically dead. God would not contradict himself. How can he say through Job that which goes in the ground should come up no more, but then at the same time through Jesus say, I'm going to raise the dead to life, and you believe he's talking about dead that's under the ground. Because Satan came in between that and told you to separate the Old Testament from the New Testament. That when Jesus came on the scene, everything that was done of old is done away with. Now Jesus is Mr. Abracadabra. You can eat pork now because Jesus got rid of the devils that was in the pork. You keep following that wicked devil. And blasphemy in God. In the name of Jesus. Then he's going to give you a God in Jesus would tell you that Jesus is this buttermilk complexion, stringy head, blue eyed, sometimes brown eyes, hook nose, Caucasian, and that he's the son of God. But in the Bible, it doesn't say that. He's described as someone that has hair like lamb's wool, feet like burnished brass in an oven. Is that right? Yes, and he's the ancient of days, meaning that there's no birth record to his beginning or his ending. Not meaning that individual, but the people that he come from. Right. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. The enemy in his devilishment gives a picture of Jesus. You don't see no picture in the scripture, but he creates a picture. He makes pictures of all the prophets to look like him. What does that say to an oppressed mind? What does that say to a people that have been made whose self-esteem has been crushed under the foot of an oppressor? It makes them to think 
subliminally mm -hmm. that if I'm looking at this man, this picture of this man, and he is the son of God, God is his father, mm -hmm. then everything he does, God is going to bless. And if he's white, right. then it's telling me subliminally right. if I act like white people, maybe God will have favor on me and my family. That's some wicked deception. This is why Moses said, don't make no graven image of God. Is that right? You come in the mosque, you're not going to see no pictures up in here. In the lecture hall, you may see pictures downstairs, whatever, but you ain't going to see it up here. Why? Because we don't need to put up no picture to form an image in your mind of what God looks like. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that God told him that the original man is God. And he said that the original man is the Asiatic black man. The maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth. God of the universe. He's father of civilization. So when you look in the mirror, you're looking at God. When you look at your sister, you're looking at God. When you look at your brother, you're looking at God. Jesus said, how can you say you love God and hate your brother whom you see every day? Well, if Jesus was a black man and he's talking to his people and saying your brother, then he's letting you know, black man and woman, that if you're going to say you love God and you don't love your brother, you don't really love God because God is in you. God is in your brother. God is in your sister. So what makes us to hate our brother and our sister? It's just a reflection of the hatred that we have for ourselves. That's right. We'll say we love ourselves, but we don't really love ourselves like we should because no one really taught us love. That's right. Our love is so minute and so immature and so selfish, it's a shame. Right. Until we learn to the knowledge of ourselves and the knowledge of God and start acting on that knowledge, then we start going through the trials of life on learning how to love ourself, love our brother, love our sister. And if you don't love your family members, how are you gonna be outside saying you love people that you never even you know, grew up with? You got more love for the brother or sister on the street than you have for your own brother and sister that you shared beds with. Think about it. Think about it. That ain't of God. Think about it. No, that's something else. That's the devil. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, by the permission of Allah and his teacher, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, right. stands up in the midst of us and gives us God's word, God's teaching, and strives to make it as plain, so plain that even a baby can understand. Right. And in the Quran, the duty of Muhammad is to teach a clear word. It's not Muhammad's duty to get business for you and I. It's not Muhammad's duty to make sure we're in a proper school. It's not Muhammad's duty to make sure you got money in your pocket. It's not Muhammad's duty to make sure that you get married and, and do right by your wife and by your children. It's Muhammad's duty to give you what Allah says clearly enough and then you act on that knowledge. I act on that knowledge. Is that right? Yes, sir. But we ain't got we can't deal with a prophet's teaching now. We gotta deal with what sums up all that what the prophets taught. With all due respect to the prophets. And the honorable Elijah Muhammad, as he told us, he met with God. Right. In the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the long-awaited Mahdi of the Muslims and the Messiah of the Christians. That God came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, July 1930. Brothers and sisters, he said that man, Master Farad Muhammad, gave him supreme wisdom. In our lessons of supreme wisdom by Master Farad Muhammad to his servant, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for the Lost Foundation of Islam, we have one of the questions that's asked in here, who is the 10%? And to give some background on that for those who may not have access to the lessons of supreme wisdom, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teacher was showing him that in every circle of knowledge, every circle of people there are 85 percent of them that are deaf dumb and blind to god self the devil the time and what must be done and there's a five percent that are poor righteous teachers who know who the true and living god is and work to enlighten the 85 percent and then there's a 10 percent 
who are the rich slave makers of the poor, That's right. who teach the poor lies. Mm -hmm. The lie is to believe that the almighty, true, and living God is a spook right. and cannot be seen by the physical eye, otherwise known as the blood sucker of the poor. That's right. Well, in a word, that describes Satan. People that practice things like that are practicing the works of Satan. Right. Come on. But there's no color barrier in this lesson. That's true. It's dealing with circles of people. Yes, sir. We got 10% in here. We got 5% in here. Mm -hmm. We got 85% in here. Yeah, yeah. And some of those that may say, well, you know, yeah, you're right. You might be a part of that circle. Mm -hmm. Because there's no color barrier. Everywhere you find truth and you find organization, you're going to find 85%, 5%, and 10%. And the quicker we understand that, the more sharper we will be in how we deal with people and maneuver to make sure that the word and way of God is practiced regardless to whom or what. Y'all all right? But this 10%, or those that are rich slave makers of the poor that got us waiting until a certain day in June to worship Father's Day. See now, upon the coming of Master Farad Muhammad and raising the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we've been given a truth that takes us out of that. So if we're still caught up in that drama with knowledge of self, knowledge of God, knowledge of the devil and the time and what must be done, then that atmosphere of the devil is still controlling you. Now some may say, well, you know, I, I beg to differ. I'm not saying don't give honor to your father. I'm saying that you've been given wisdom that allows you to be master of yourself. So why is the master, that white man, that became the master over our ancestors still ruling space in some of our minds. You know, if it's raining outside and you had plans for that day to do things, you know, some of us will let the rain stop us from going on with our plans. But well, who's the author of rain? God, isn't he your father? So what do you do when it rains? You put on rain gear and you go out and do what you gotta do. But if you're a fair weather Muslim, or a fair weather Christian, or a fair weather soldier, or a fair weather nationalist, then the rain will stop you from doing the work that it takes to liberate yourself, your family, and your people. Come on, come Is that right? Yes, sir. Because of the atmosphere? No. When you and I come into the knowledge of ourself and our God, and we're determined to make things happen with God's help, then we change the atmosphere. We adapt to the atmosphere and still do the will of the Father. Is that right? So the 10% has his own atmosphere, but he makes sure that in the midst of that, he keeps our people believing in a mystery God. There is no mystery God, brothers and sisters. To say to use the word mystery is meaning that which is unknown. How could somebody teach you about God and then tell you God is unknown? Then how the hell do they know? <laughs> I mean, just think about it. They're teaching you and I about God. And when you ask, where is God? They say, no one has seen him. No one? No one has seen him. He can't be seen. But he's this, he's that. Well, how do you know? It's deception. It's truth mixed with falsehood. And only God can come and bust that up. That's right. Yonah Elijah Muhammad says in message to the black man, for thousands of years, the people who did not have the knowledge of the personal reality of God worshiped their own idea of God. That's right. Thousands of years. That's right. Jesus, brother. Thousands. <laughs> I'm talking about hundreds, thousands. So that means when you go back into ancient history and thinking you got something with the metuneta and this, that, and that, you better find out whether or not they had a proper knowledge of the person and reality of God. And I'm not pushing that knowledge to the side, but where's the person and reality of God in that knowledge? If you find it, then try to hold on to that and investigate that. Yeah, come on, brother. There you go. Because if we're in his image and after his likeness, then when I look at my nose, I'm thinking about God's nose. Yeah. 
when I look at my eyes, I'm thinking about God's eyes. What do you think about? Um, good question. Maybelline? <laughs> Dark and Lovely? Yeah. Halle Berry? <laughs> Queen Latifah? <laughs> LeBron James? Who do you who comes to your mind as an image? of standard <laughs> when you think about yourself in success and more importantly when you think about God if we talk about a car what's your favorite car you can say what comes to mind what's your favorite dress what's your favorite hairstyle what's your favorite diamond what's your favorite bike what's the favorite shoes you like what's the jeans you like come on son what kind of phone you want but when I say God what image comes to your mind? The author of our existence. If you draw a blank, there's something seriously wrong. And if you don't have a problem with that, there's something more seriously wrong. But some of us never even thought about it. And that's, that's detrimental to our condition that we never even thought about God as a being. We never even thought about God as our standard. That means we've been crushed so low in our thinking that a prophet won't get us out of this condition. Can't get us out of this condition. God would have to come himself to get us out of this condition. So in the scriptures of the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, there is a scripture here in the uh, ninth chapter of Isaiah that Minister Farrakhan quoted to us, and I want to find it and read it. <laughs> Let me find it first. Okay. Oh, this is small print. This is when classes come out. <laughs> See, when you when you get to that age of forty and above, and you laugh now. You start seeing them them little floating dots. You're gonna realize. You be sitting around talking. You know, every once in a while, I see, and then I blink my eyes, and it's gone. You ignoring it. You're behind these glasses. You better go get your eyes checked. <laughs> All right now. <laughs> Here's Isaiah saying in the scriptures I'm going to read from um, the beginning of chapter 9 where it says and this is entitled a divine child Israel's only hope All right. All right. and it says here in the Bible nevertheless the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zublum and the land of Naphtali you know something? Let's pause right there. See, this is another problem we have. Yeah, right here. This King's English. This will make the average ignorant black man and woman do not want to read the Bible. Because when they start trying to pronounce it, it's like, man, what? That close it up. This is why we know God has to raise somebody up for us. To make this clear, to inspire us to want to pick this book up. Before I heard from Farrakhan, I did not want to read no Bible, brothers and sisters. I didn't want to read no Quran. I didn't even know about a Quran. We got to be inspired by each other. Is that right? All these doggone names. <laughs> and afterward, thank you, sister, because we're about to by Allah's grace. And afterward, did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them have the light shine. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy before thee the according to the joy in harvest and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil for thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder the rod of his oppressor as in the day of Midian now look if we're preaching this in the mosque and the church and we're making you to look back 5,000 years 
and don't bring it up to the reality of your day and time, you'll never know how this is meaningful to you and I. Right. It just becomes Bible. That's what happened yeah. then. Is that right? Yeah. But this language is congruent to the language of the New Testament with John. Mm -hmm. Where John is talking about uh, 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 um, the light shined in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Yeah. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But we're in darkness. Right. When you don't know your real name, and you don't know who you are and where you're really from. You claim Africa and you don't even know what the name of that was before it was named Africa. You claim America and you don't know that America was a name given after a white man. Your name identifies you. So if we can't identify ourselves, that means we're in darkness mentally. Thinking that we're in the light. So when this scripture talks about a people in darkness, I got to look at myself. I got to look at our condition. Is that right? Yes. I can't be looking back on the time of Isaiah and the time of Jesus 2,000 years That's ago, right. 4,000. No, I got to see how that applies to me now. That's and it's right. on the job of the preacher. It's the job of the imam. That's it's right. the job of the, right. of the pastor. Come on. The clergy to make sure that when they preach this word, they bring it up into modern day and time. That's right. Because God is not dead. No, sir. He's still moving and working. That's right. Is that right? That's right? But Satan comes in between the pastor, between the imam, between the reverend, between the minister to put you and I to sleep on God. That's right. That's a fact. That's right. That's right. And if we start preaching for money, then we'll put we'll um, bypass the hard truths of God because we don't want to hurt your feelings when it comes down to that collection plate. <laughs> But the scripture says, if God be for you, who can be against you? Is that right? And if I stand up as a Muslim and say, I bear witness, there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger in that statement. I am saying that I'm not going to bow to nothing or no one but God. And then strive to live my everyday life not, not bowing to anyone or anything but God. Many of us will say that like it's a cliche. Yes, sir. I bear witness there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Just as we'll say, for God for so loved the world, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that for whosoever believeth in him will have everlasting life. But if you believe in God's servant as his son, then you're going to try to be like him. That's right, right. Is that right? Yes, Not when it's convenient, even when it's inconvenient. Inconvenient, rather. So here it is. Isaiah is saying to us, by God's permission, for thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with the burning and fuel of fire. So those who stand in the name of God are warriors for God. All right. That's right. You know, we talk about the Christian soldier. Yes, sir. Right. Is that right? right? We read in the Bible of the different wars and everything that took place with those prophets that stood up in the armies of men that was behind them dealing with the oppressor. We right. read about Muhammad and his soldiers. All right. That's right. But God got an army. That's right. That's right. See, you see me standing in front of you with this uniform on. This uniform represents God's arm. Right. This is the uniform of a soldier who is a savior, who is a redeemer, who's working to help raise the dead to life. But at the same time, we're soldiers. And a soldier receives instructions from the commanding officer. And the commander is God. And his servant stands in his place to give us instructions on how to go after the dead and go after our people and how to deal with the enemy and the oppressor. A soldier follows instructions. A soldier follows order. Jesus was a soldier. Moses was a soldier. Muhammad is a soldier. There is no prophet or messenger of God that wasn't or isn't a soldier. And the women of God, Martha was a soldier. Mary was a soldier. They weren't soft when it came down to God and God's word and the principles that they supposed to stand on. In the name of God, they were soldiers. They were silent, kind killers. All praises are due to Allah. All praises are due to Allah. 
That's what you see in the MGT and GCC. That's what you see in the FOI. That's what you see in our sister soldiers that are on the street trying to do work in the name of their children, in the name of their community. It may seem unorthodox by the way that they're doing it, but God is guiding all of this, brothers and sisters. So as we read in Isaiah, this part here is where the emphasis has to come in at. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. All right now. Now we're talking about a man that's born, who is a warrior, who is a soldier, but he's a child who is the son of a father. Is that right? Now we can start getting into the word, the, the meaning of father by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Because if we use the father as the principal point on how we should be as fathers, then we got some proper guidance. Is that right? Y'all all right? Yeah. Well, Minister Farrakhan teaches us that that scripture points out to us the father of civilization. Right. It points out to us the father who was a son that became a father. All right. I'm looking for my specific notes on that. And when you think about it, brothers and sisters, how could we be a father if we never followed our father. <laughs> Listen to the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He says, this one who was born of a woman would become a father, but he would be a father of an everlasting nation. And of the increase of his government, but it is a special government, a government of peace. There shall be no end. That is powerful. Yeah. Now what's the power that's in that? We can find a lot of things that's powerful in it. And as you read the article, if you haven't already read it from the latest edition of the Final Call, you found a lot in that. Yes, we right. were studying on this Friday night in our study group. Mm -hmm. Look at this. This one who was born of a woman. Now let me just put some emphasis here for a minute. Because oftentimes we'll talk about the son. And we'll talk about the father and we'll act like if though the woman was just a tool used to produce a child and then go somewhere and sit down. No, 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 no. no. I heard a comedian say one time, you know, you follow an uh, ignorant child home, you're going to find an ignorant mother. He said it a little um, uh, more degrading than that. <laughs> it was kind of rough. Why do I say that? If the woman don't have the knowledge and the man has the knowledge, then you're not gonna produce children with knowledge. Okay. Come on. Because we all have our duties and responsibilities, our roles that we play out as husband and wife. Is that right? right. That's right. And if the mother's home with the children and she's ignorant to God, Come on. ignorant to God's way of life, then that gets passed down through her genes to that child. That's right. Yeah, the man plant the seeds, and if he got that knowledge, he's practicing it, then he's doing a disservice to his household if he's not making sure that his woman don't have that same path of knowledge to follow. Not that he has to teach her directly. Once she knows about it and it's willingly accepts it, Come on. then she's on the path of knowledge just like he, because the male is not like the female. Right, right. We study, but we don't, we don't receive the same way. We don't comprehend the same way. That's right. Is that right? Yes, oh, y'all don't think so, huh? Right. Oh, really? Teach us, brother. Teach us. I'm not going to take a lot of time on that, but I'll say this. Brothers, you ever be in a discourse of dialogue with your woman and she says something to you and you don't, it doesn't register you in the right way? And then you give it back to her because you upset about it. Because when you said such and such, it was telling me blah, 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 whatever that is. And she'll be like, what? 
That is not what I meant. Yes, it is. Because, I, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's how you took it, but that's not what I meant. How many of us ever been in one of those kind of conversations? So you think the male and the female is alike still? We do not think alike. The quicker you understand that, the better your relationship will be. <laughs> we don't think alike. And sisters, you got to understand that. You do not think like a man. Look, I don't want to be disrespectful. But there's a part two of a movie coming now. There's no way that you're going to be able to think like a man. There's no way you're going to be able to think like a woman. Well, how do you know? Because you're not a woman. And you're not a man. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. We made up differently. We're two halves of one whole. Try to think like God and maybe we'll work out better with one another. But you start trying to think like a man and think like a woman, gee, you're going to have some serious problems. All right, I'm just saying. I'm not saying you can't analyze, but don't try to do that. Our natures are different. All right. So this woman that gives birth to this son, what I'm trying to get at is that she is a woman of God. She's a woman that has knowledge of God. She's a woman that recognizes God. She's a woman that has been striving to be obedient to God before she met a man that gave her this son. So in her genes, in her makeup, in her thinking, it's already a certain pattern that is of obedience to God and living by the principles of God. So when she gives birth to a child from a man of God, unto us a child is born. All right. Unto us a son is given. That's the powerful part of that statement that I see. And we could go further, but time is upon us. We're not going to take that but so far. But the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan goes on to talk about how Jesus, as a son who became a father, he says, because every son ultimately becomes a father. And the quality, listen to this, right. the quality of your sonship will determine the quality of your fatherhood. Come on. Come on. Right. The quality of your sonship Very good. Very good. will determine the quality of your fatherhood. Many of us grew up without a father. That's right. Right. Wow. But still, the quality of your sonship will determine the quality of your fatherhood. How obedient was you to your mother if you grew up without a father? You still was a son. See, because by the time God comes in your life, in my life, the, the uh, uh, disobedience that we practice with our mother and our father or with our father or with our mother is going to come up in our relationship with God. Is that right? So I found that statement to be very um, powerful. And when we were in the study circle, we was talking about it. And all of us as men, we had to bear witness. You know, that I, whatever problem we had with our father reflected on how we was going to be as a father and reflected on how we was going to be obedient to God as we came into the knowledge of God. Now you may not want to admit it, but it's simple mathematics. Because Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us about knowledge of self. Is that right? Know thyself. Well, how do you, are you going to be able to know yourself after a man comes and introduces you to God and tells you that you are God so he gives you the standing through the knowledge of God of what you got to live by, but then you got to have a knowledge of yourself. What has been your relationship with your father? What has been your relationship with your mother prior to you coming into that knowledge? And how has that relationship affected every relationship you've had in your life? The first man in your life is your father. The first woman in your life is your mother. That's so then right. how do you treat the women in your life? Is it based off of how you look at your mother? Right. Is it based off of how you look at your father? Right. And if you haven't had your father in your life or you haven't been looking at him properly, then when God comes to raise up a father spiritually in your life, then you have a chance to start a new relationship. All right. All right. 
So you can't use the excuse, I ain't know my father. No, God has given you a father. When, uh, when God raises up a messenger from among the people for the people in his name, that's the father over that community. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's Satan comes in between that and says, you got to be your own leader. That's what they say. You don't follow nobody. Now you've never heard Satan say that to you directly. But if I was to ask by a show of hands how many of you have said that yourself about your children and yourself, that was Satan. How are you going to say you don't follow nobody? Who taught you how to tie your shoes? Who taught you how to blow your raggedy nose? Who taught you how to wipe yourself? You followed somebody. Now that you think you all that, you ain't got to follow nobody and you ain't going to raise your children to follow nobody. And that's why they're giving you hell. Because if you ain't going to raise them to follow nobody, they ain't following you either. Is that right? Okay. All praises are due to Allah. So, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan shows how Jesus, who was the son of a father through his obedience to the father became a good father himself. Right. But he also says, you know, it's the same thing with Prophet Muhammad. Now Jesus is quoted as, you know, and we all know, know this and we'll be reading some of the scriptures of Jesus by Allah's grace. But the minister says, Jesus submitted totally to the father. Oh, right. Right. Totally. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And he says, here's Jesus making the statement, whatsoever I hear, that shall I speak. All right. Whatsoever the Father commandeth me, that shall I do. All right. Brothers and sisters, you know some of us will fight against God yes, sir. and don't even realize we're fighting against God. That's right. And at the root of your fight against God is because you have not really accepted God to be a man. Right. You talk it out of your mouth, but yeah. you ain't accepted. Right. That's right. We'll go through arguments as brothers and sisters, as family. When a, when a sister stands up on the word of God coming from the teachings of Honorable Elijah Muhammad through Minister Farrakhan and decides to start covering her hair, the crown of her beauty yeah. in fashion America, decides to start going three quarters and covering her body. And making sure that she keeps herself covered so that she don't tempt no man that may tempt her. Right away, her own family members start coming against her. Well, why are you doing that? And what's that all about? And then as soon as she starts quoting Elijah Muhammad and starts quoting Minister Farrakhan or quote Sister Ava and say, Well, you don't, what do you say? I hear you talking about what they say. What do you say? Why are you following them? That's what they do. And because you don't know how to combat against it, it starts making you cower down from that which is in your heart to really want to do. So every time you get around that certain family member, you try to act like you ain't with Farrakhan. Because you don't want no argument. But if God be for you, who can be against you? See, all praises are due to Allah. All the same thing happens with us as brothers, but just in a different way. But then at the same time, it happens right within our own family. That's right. Husband and wife. Yeah. Where the brother is following a command from God. Ah, yes. From that man that he believes is a direct extension of God. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. See, the way some people look at Jesus, that's how we look at Farrakhan. That's right. Because I ain't got time to beat around the bush with this. The way that many look at Jesus, we look at Farrakhan. Now, some of you may say, oh, I see, you just lost me right there, brother. Well, go find your mystery Jesus. Because we got a man. No, no, look, I'm not trying to put nobody down. But if we got a man in our midst that's trying to follow in the footsteps of the Jesus that you read about in the Bible and the Quran. Yeah, right. Come on. That where he puts his foot down is following behind where Jesus put his foot down. Yeah, right, and that man is living by that example and giving us Jesus as an example, giving us Moses, giving us Muhammad, but telling us about a man that taught him about those men. That's right. 